Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Northwest Suburbs Cable Communications Commission. It's been a long time since I've seen you all in person. It's nice to see you in person. Thanks for being here. I think we do we do we don't need to do roll call. I'm so out of practice from real meetings. Okay, first items on the agenda are the consent items that were in your packet, the minutes from the February 17th meeting and the treasurer's report. Are there comments? Is there a motion to approve? Thank you, Mr. Blonigan. Is there a second? second? Thank you, Mr. Bergman. Uh, moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Action items. Before we launch into action items, I just want to point out that Mike Bradley's presentation uh, requires action, so that will be the fourth item under the action items rather than an information item. Um, so first action item is the insurance liability waiver. Dave. Mr. And I Madam should Chair. welcome you in your first meeting in your new official capacity. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And thank you for <laughs> filling in this morning. Unfortunately, Al Madsen's sick today, so and has stepped up as vice chair to help us out. Before you, each year, the Northwest Suburbs Cable Communication Commission votes to not waive the monetary limits on municipal tort liability. By doing this action, you're affirming that the commission simply requests liability coverage equal to statutory limits. And what we're doing is requesting that the Northwest Suburbs Cable Communications Commission vote to not waive the monetary limits on municipal tort liability. Be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Dave. I think most cities are familiar with this, but if there's any questions, otherwise. Thanks, Kirk. Thank you. Was that Jim? All right, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, next item is updating the news coverage policy. Dave. Thank you, Madam Chair. You have attachment four in front of you at the executive committee meeting in March of 2005. So this goes a ways back. Executive Tracy. committee reaffirmed the news coverage policy and it was approved at the full commission meeting shortly after that. And we've included that in the packet for you for your information of that action that took place in March of 2005. It's a great overview of why news coverage policy is needed. And recently we've had a handful of instances over the past couple years in which individuals from cities requested that the news department hold back on certain stories or may not have been satisfied with what was said in a news story. And a lot certainly has changed in the news arena with the digital format now, not just being on the channel, but the distribution is much heavier now. The current news policy reads as follows. The goal of Channel 12 News is to provide an independent source of news and information and maintain the highest standards of journalistic integrity. It is produced every day, Monday through Friday, and a weekend version also done. So obviously there's some updating to some of the language that needs to happen here as well. Staff is seeking to update the policy as a standalone policy that would be tied to the Society of Professional Journalists Code of Ethics, and you have that information attached. Staff will also need to put a system in place where this policy is communicated with city leaders on a to-be-determined basis. So we think it's important that on an annual basis that this information is taken before elected officials and city staff because obviously there is turnover at the cities. There has been turnover since 2005, so we think this is important to do. This news policy that we're talking about today was brought before the executive committee for discussion on April 19th. The committee suggested that the staff finalize a brief news coverage policy statement, bring it before the commission and board, which we're doing today, so it will go before both groups. It was also suggested that the policy be posted on the CCX Media website along with a link to the SPJ Code of Ethics. And the proposed policy, as you see on the second page, is as reads. CCX Media will serve as an independent source of news and information covering the nine member cities. Journalists representing CCX Media News will strive to maintain the highest form of integrity 
and follow the four principles of the Society of Professional Journalist Code of Ethics. And you see those included in the packet as well. Seek the truth and report it, minimize harm, act independently, and be accountable and transparent. And at this point, staff is seeking for adoption of this news policy for CCX Media. And again, this will be talked about later in the board meeting as well. Be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Dave. Um, as Dave said, the executive committee did have a healthy discussion about this last month. Um, and that's this is where we came down. This policy is what we came down to and are recommending. Are there comments, questions? Yes, sir. I think the urgency is that it has been so long since we had updated this policy and we think there has been quite a bit of turnover. So as you see, it's not that different from what the policy was in past. There have been a few instances where there have been cities that have information that maybe has come before the council or come before a work session that has been open to the public and the new staff has reported on some of those items and the cities have felt should that have been covered even though it was in a public meeting. Yep. Yeah, it was no secret. There were no secret information shared. It was just Correct. there was concern about public information That's being what shared. I was for. Thank yep. you. Mm -hmm. Jim. Thank you. Um, I, I support the, repose, uh, the proposed change in this policy. Um, we in Plymouth had one incident where there was some disagreement on the reporting uh, by, on the part of some folks. And the fact of the matter is, as Ann just said, it was the discussion, everything took place at a public meeting, which is televised like this one. Uh, and the fact is, is that it is information that is newsworthy, whether people agree with one side or the other of the issue. And I think the, uh, the staff uh, has done, a, in my judgment, a very fine job of presenting um, the information and news in our communities in a fair and balanced fashion. It's not to say anybody has to always agree with it, but the fact is, I think it's a key to our survival here that if we are going to run a news op operation, and we do, that uh, we give them the respect and the latitude that they need to fairly and accurately, uh, to the best of their ability, report the news of our communities. And uh, so that's why I'd like to see this policy revised and clearly stated. Thanks, Jim. Any other comments, questions? Motion to approve. So moved. Thank you, Bill. Motion to approve. Is there a second? second. Thank you, Jim. Um, moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? Otherwise, all in favor of updating the news coverage policy, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. All right, item number three, recommendation to hire a financial HR consultant. Take it away. Thank you, Madam Chair. Attachment number five, it is a rather beefy document, so you have probably taken a look at that or can as we talk here. I will give you a quick overview. Staff feels we can benefit from a deep dive process evaluation of both our financial practices as well as our HR practices for both the commission and the CCX Media Group from a financial and HR consulting firm. We operate, as you know, as a government joint powers agency, and CCX Media operates, operates as a 501c3 nonprofit. So we are an interesting group, and it's something that has a lot of ties to it from both the HR and financial end. And with our recent leadership change, great opportunity for us to review what is working, what may need tweaking, and what processes we may need to implement going forward. Along with this process evaluation, this would also be a good time to have interim finance director services it would be about five hours per week to work directly with Wendy Brierly, who handles accounting, payroll, and HR. So Wendy obviously wears a number of hats for us, and we think this would be helpful for Wendy as well. I'll state a little bit more about that in a second. These hours would replace what Mike Johnson had worked in his executive director role. 
by having these interim services, the consulting firm would be able to offer financial solutions and guidance throughout the remainder of the year and also give us advice as we look to the future. Obviously, we're looking more at sustainability, some other things that might involve contracts, sales agreements, those types of forms that we haven't had in the past and we think someone from an outside firm helping us would be very beneficial. As I mentioned, Wendy, the vast majority of the financial work is being done by Wendy Brierly. This includes accounting work, payroll, in addition to her HR and general administrative work. Cindy, Cindy Almstead, who some of you might know from the front desk, also works in administration, spends a very small portion of her time in accounting doing proofing, and she processes four payrolls a year to keep into that swing as well out of the 26 payrolls. And Cindy will be retiring next year, so we have a couple staff changes here that are affecting this area. Through the process, evaluation, and interim finance director services, this will be an excellent opportunity again to determine how accounting and HR should be staffed going forward. And with Cindy retiring early next year, Wendy has expressed interest, obviously, and some help due to these changes. The fee structure is spelled out within page 31 of the attached proposal. And what we would be doing and what we would be able to do with this is work it with our contingency budgets and account 6400, which is conference training fees. And the interim finance director services can be accommodated within our payroll budget. So that's how we would handle the two different elements of what we're proposing. This proposal was brought before the executive committee on April 19th. After review and discussion, the committee voted to support the proposal and have it brought to the full commission as we're doing today. Staff is seeking approval to move forward with this proposal in the end of May. So we have talked with the ABDO firm multiple times and they would be able to work with us starting here in the end of the month. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thanks, Dave. Questions for Dave? I have a comment. In New Hope, we have used the financial services of ABDO for the last 13 years. And our city council has been very happy with the accurate, up-to-date financial information that they produce. So I totally support this. And as I pointed out at the executive committee, Crystal does use ABDO as well. Mark. So um, I'm, all, I'm all for getting a deep dive into our finances. Um, one of the things that we started covering a couple years ago was how we're going to exist way out mm -hmm. into the future. And I think that is also a conversation that we should be repeating and refining here shortly. Um, if Mike was able to do it in five hours, I'm just kind of curious to the nature of this. It looks like, from what I can see in here, this is a contract that extends on. I don't see a specific short-term duration to this. So if the deep dive component is necessary, then whereas are we proposing the long-term solution of this is to help with this uh, further incoming draft <laughs> task transitions? Or, I mean, because it kind of looks to me like this is a permanent thing that we're putting into place here. Is that accurate? It would be through the end of the year, would be the interim services. So okay. the deep dive would be within the next two to three month period of time. The interim would be through the end of the year is what we have looked at budgeting for. Okay. And then assistance, you are correct, with helping us set up what the structure they recommend for the future. Thank you. Good question. So with yes. that, I'd make a motion to approve this. Okay, hold that thought. Bill. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you can move oh, okay. Ah! Motion by Kirk. <laughs> I mean, it's my last time to be polite to you, so. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <all> funny. <laughs> well, yes, you've got a motion. I'll second his motion. All right. Okay, ah, moved ah. and seconded. Is there further discussion? Bill, I thought there might be a question. <laughs> so, this is through the end of the year. If I was Wendy, I would want A, help, and B, um, oversight in the city of Robbinsdale due to our small size sometimes we have mm -hmm. notes uh, we used to have notes that uh, in your accounting procedures you don't have um, redundancy and oversight so is this one of the things that will be looked at in the future two things I guess number one how are we going to go forward with what type of an employee next year for uh, financial types of things and number two, um, redundancy, so one person's not in charge of everything as far as finances. 
exactly what we're looking for out of this is to get some assistance in that area and Wendy has just worked very closely with the auditor through this year's process which has just completed and we feel that will probably be one of the statements again Wendy would that be correct that they will talk <laughs> about the size of our organization yeah. and so we are looking to get some direction that can help us with that but we understand as well Wendy would this be correct that for small size organizations even some of the smaller cities this is just a natural thing that happens each year. It seems <laughs> common in the city of Minneapolis. It's even for the big cities. It's common all over the place. So yes, Bill, we will certainly look into that and get some direction from the firm of what's the best way to structure staff moving forward. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, there's been a motion made. All in favor of approve, or hiring the financial HR consultant say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you, motion carries. All right, next item is uh, Mike Bradley is going to talk about the cable franchise renewal process. Woohoo! I Yay. can't believe we're back to that. Yeah. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. Um, yes, we, uh, as you all know, um, one of our you know, most important documents that we have for this organization is our cable franchise with Comcast. And um, those franchises are typically 10 to 15 years long. Um, I believe our current one is, has been for 15 years. 10. Or 10 years, yeah, you're right, 10 years. And, um, and the cable operator is required to provide notice to the commission that it intends to renew the franchise about three years before the expiration. And, um, and that's required by the Federal Cable Act. Uh, we're required then to start the franchise renewal process uh, internally here at the commission. And so what we've done is we received that notice from Comcast in January, that's in your packet, um, and we, we're now going to commence the renewal process. And basically what we've put together is a resolution uh, that we uh, asked for your approval today. And it basically says that we're going to have the executive director spearhead that renewal effort on the commission's behalf and uh, do all the things necessary to move the ball forward um, in the franchise renewal process. Um, this has gone in front of the executive committee and they have approved the uh, or recommended approval by the full commission and we ask for that approval today. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thanks Mike. Questions? Mike, uh, Mark, sorry. Just for clarity, you recommended the executive director spearheading. We do have a negotiations committee. Um, that's been formally set up. At what point in time will that committee be called in to assist in this process? I'm not sure yet. Um, <laughs> uh, we haven't had those discussions um, yet between Dave and I and the executive committee, but I would imagine that it would it would happen sometime this year, you know, shortly this year. That that committee, I'm a member of the committee as well, and. Um, it's established um, definitely for a purpose, has a lot of expertise on the committee. So um, I'm all for the executive director heading this up, but I would really like to push for utilization of the committee as it represents all nine member cities pretty equally. Um, so I'd like to push for that involvement earlier as opposed to later. For sure. Yeah. Good comment. Mike and I had talked about the next step in the process and it would probably be at an executive committee meeting in September and that may be a time as well that we look at the negotiate committee being a part of that as well. Thank you. Other questions, comments, motion to approve the resolution that Mike referenced? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? second? Thank you. <laughs> Further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. The resolution regarding the franchise process is approved. Now we're into information items. And our first item is Kirk is bailing on us. So I guess we're going to recognize Kirk McDonald from New Hope. Commissioner McDonald, pardon me. We would love to do that. Madam Chair, New Hope City Manager Kirk McDonald will be retiring from the City of New Hope at the end of this month. Kirk served on the Northwest Suburbs Cable Communication Commission for 15 years. We are so thankful for that. Kirk has also served on the CCX Media Board of Directors for 10 years, and during that time he also served on the 
Boer's Executive Committee and on the Policies and Activities Committee, so we kept him very busy. With Kirk's retirement from the City of New Hope, he also will be resigning from the Cable Commission and the CCX Media Board. Kirk's final commission meeting and board meeting is today, May 19th. <laughs> We're very thankful for the dedicated service of Kirk McDonald and wish him well in his retirement. Kirk, if you would like to come up, we have something for you here. <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to get that? Oh, I have to do it. Yes. <laughs> I'm not the only one that's leaving. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I, they might have something for her, too. Okay, I'm presenting you this for 15 years of service to the Cable Commission. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and as a neighbor. Thank you. It's been, it's been fun. <laughs> I, well, <laughs> that's one word. Thank you, Kirk. Thanks for your years of service. You're not going to make a long, windy speech? No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Next item up is introduction of Beth Kramer. Beth Kramer is in the back oh, row over the here from <laughs> the City of New Hope. We wanted to take this opportunity to introduce Beth, who is the Communications Coordinator at the City of New Hope, and Kirk wanted to bring her today to see a little bit of what the process is, as she is the next person that would step into this role for the City of New Hope. Beth Kramer has worked with the City of New Hope since 2018, first as an administrative specialist for the city manager, so the two of them worked closely together before moving to her current position as communications coordinator in 2020. Beth manages all of the city's communication platforms and messaging. She also coordinates all media relations items and the content management for the city's website. Prior to her work at New Hope, Beth spent 12 years working in the private sector for Best Buy managing communication strategies. We're very excited to have Beth officially join the board at the September meeting. So Beth, thank you for being with us. Welcome Beth, almost welcome. <laughs> thank you. All right, I think now we're back to Mike for a legal update. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Um, my, my legal report is in the packet. Um, I would just uh, point out a couple of things. Um, the, uh, the FCC still has not filled, or, or the Senate has still not filled the FCC's um, fifth seat, so we're still at a 2-2 um, situation at the uh, FCC. Um, and then I did want to bring to your attention uh, that the, the Comcast subscriber numbers, you know, continue to go down, and I just want to make sure that you're aware of that, that obvious, obviously has impacts on local governments across the country um, and for organizations like this that you know do rely on um, franchise fee and peg fee um, funding and so it's important um, to be working with the league and organizations like MACTA and UTOA to you know look at you know how we how we're dealing with franchising um, but then also maybe how we're dealing with streaming services as well um, so just something to, to keep in mind. I know Dave's well, well aware of this and, uh, and has been working with um, ACTA and others uh, behind the scenes. So, but did wanna just kind of raise that to the uh, board level. Happy to answer any questions you might have. Thanks, Mike. I have a question. So mm -hmm. as subscriber numbers for like additional cable go down mm -hmm. um, and those franchise fees go down, mm -hmm. with the renewal, is there an opportunity to get franchise fees on um, like internet access? which is kind of, you know, flat or probably increasing? Great question. The, the answer <laughs> right now is no. Okay. I wish I could go on and on about that, but it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty clear that the answer is no right now. Yeah. Other questions? All right. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for the update. You bet. Uh, communications. Dave. Madam Chair, a few items that are in your packet in attachment 10 to bring to your attention. We did receive information from Carly Werner from Comcast about the affordable connectivity program. So wanted to make sure the cities were aware of that. They're looking for some assistance in promoting that program. They have some copy here for newsletters, social media, as well as other information that you could pass along to residents about that program that does assist with people with a $30 monthly credit for some of the acceptance and connectivity programs. So if you're interested in that and have other questions, certainly Carly would be able to help you with that, but there is an attachment in the packet related to that. Talking a little bit about the 
number of cable subscribers. The next document is something from the Connecticut Post that talks about as cable fades in popularity, public access t TV stations suffer. And again, talking about what we just mentioned as far as the cable subscribers numbers and how that affects the budgets for some of the access systems. There was a bill before the legislature's Energy and Technology Committee in Connecticut to talk about some of the opportunities. Again, it draws opposition from a host of industry groups representing cable and internet companies, satellite providers, and streaming platforms. So this discussion has it is happening out there, but again, obviously receiving some pushback from the industry. So wanted to include that for your information, which may answer some of the questions that are happening. The final document is from NATOA, again, one of the organizations that Mike mentioned looking at state video franchising laws, some litigation update as of April 4th, 2022. You see a lot of information here about what over the top providers are saying related to video service, streaming services, cable companies, trying to talk about some of that language of what is a video service or what is a cable operator. So those are some of the discussions that are happening. The last page, last few pages outline some of the activities that are happening in multiple states across the country. So wanted to, again, make sure you had that for your information. Thanks, Dave. Questions for Dave? All right, thank you. Next up, other, do we have anything else? Other. I do not. Anyone? All right, is there a motion to adjourn this meeting of the commission? So moved. All right, thank you. Thanks, Kimberly. Second? second. Thanks, Therese. Um, all in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. We are adjourned, but don't go away. Most of us still have a board of directors meeting next. <laughs> all right. Uh, welcome to the board of directors meeting for CCX Media. Um, it's fun always to go second. A lot of familiar reports between this meeting and the previous meeting. Uh, so no, no roll call necessary. Consent items, we have the minutes and the treasurer's report to consider. Is there a motion? I'll move. Moved by Ann, is there a second? Second. Second, Fred Darrell, thank you. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, into the action items. The first item is the insurance liability waiver. That was just uh, covered in the previous meeting. Um, is there a motion on that? Make a motion. Kirk moved, is there a second? Second. And seconded. All those, uh, any discussion? All those in, oh yes. Can I have to clarify Mark. his motion, please? All I heard was moved. I didn't hear the content of his motion. Not point of view. Thank sorry. you. That's right, I probably didn't hear it. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, this is the liability <laughs> waiver. Yep, I know. Okay, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, now we have a new item. This is amending the budget for the purchase of leased vehicles. Thank you, Madam Chair. Attachment number four in your packet, I'll give a brief overview. Staff is proposing an amendment to the budget to address a unique opportunity for short-term to medium-term savings related to our car leases that end in July of 2022. The five cars that we have, which are 2019 Ford Escapes that we use for carrying reporters, equipment, photographers out to stories on a regular basis for all parts of our operation. We lease, they have extremely low mileage between 17,000 and 30,000. We've researched the cost to enter into a new 39 month lease at this time and it would be $498 per month per car in contrast to the 359 that we're paying per car at this time. At the end of the lease, we can purchase the three cars, three of the five cars for $14,687 each and two cars for $14,883 each. You have that information in the rest of the packet for a total of $74,367. And you see that the fair purchase price for the vehicles is listed at almost $26,000 at this point. So these are some valuable vehicles that we have, again, with very low mileage. Staff is proposing to make budget adjustments for a budget amendment to purchase our five leased vehicles as follows. 10,000 from account 6022, which would be budgeted in 2022 for new lease down payments. So we had already budgeted for that process if we were going to lease once again. 13,200, which will be the remaining amount in account 6023 that is budgeted for lease payments for the remaining months in this year. 
and 51,200, which will be added to the budget for account 6025, which will be a new line item set up to make up the additional amount needed to purchase the vehicles at this time. We would also propose raising our vehicle repair budget by 5,000 for 2022 and in future years to cover anticipated repair costs which the total amendment to the budget is 56,200. So at this time, we're looking for approval from the board to make that amendment to the budget to purchase the five vehicles that we have. We do own the utility van that you'll see located on this side of the building. We also do own the two production trucks that we have as well. So we do have some owned vehicles currently, but in the past, because of the rates, it has been our policy to lease the vehicles, but we think this is an opportunity to save some money down the road and purchase those vehicles with very low mileage. Happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Is there a motion? So moved. <laughs> okay. Thank you, uh, Joni moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Uh, the Thank next you. item is updating the news coverage uh, policy. We did have a discussion on this at the previous meeting. Uh, any, any additional discussion needed? Is there a motion to update the news coverage policy? I'll make that motion. Uh, and and move, Jody seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. <laughs> Another person retiring. Golly. Who could that be? <laughs> Hard to believe. Hard to believe. <laughs> Man. <laughs> yes, uh, Madam Chair Robinsdale City Manager Marsha Glick will be retiring from the City of Robinsdale at the end of May. Marsha has served on the CCX Media Board of Directors for 24 years, also served as Board Chair since 2011. With Marsha's retirement from the City of Robinsdale, she will also be resigning her role as the CCX Media Board of Directors Chair. Marsha's final board meeting is today, May 19th. Again, we are very thankful for the dedicated service of Marsha Glick and wish her well in retirement. And again, has also served with us on various committees, led quite a few things that we've done here at CCX Media. We can't thank you enough, Marsha. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> and we do have a plaque for you as well. <laughs> thank you for your service. I know you love plaques. You need more for your law <laughs> Any comments you would have, please. I'm being patient for Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, I've been counting down my last of a lot of things, and this is my last early morning meeting. <laughs> Happy to say, just not a morning person. Um, <laughs> have enjoyed uh, getting to know a lot of you, and uh, thank you for all of the work that all of you do for your communities. Thank you, Marcia. And one other item at this point, we talked about Kirk in the first meeting, but Kirk <laughs> is part of both of the groups that we have. Let's see if we can get Kirk's smiling face. There he is right there on the screen. So I will read the plaque. CCX Media Board of Directors proudly recognizes Kirk McDonald for 10 years of dedicated service to his community and to the CCX Media Board 2012 to 2022. Kirk, I'll bring this over to you. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Save you a few Good steps. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much for your service. You <laughs> All right, uh, staff reports. On your table, you'll find information about the May reports, and we'll begin with Shannon Slatten, our news director, also assistant executive director. There she appears to the microphone, Shannon. Take Hello it away. everyone. I had another task today of operating the audio board, so <laughs> hopefully that's all good. Um, two items I wanted to tell you about as far as the news department. Uh, starting Monday, we are fully staffed for the first time in several months, and that's a good feeling. Uh, Neil Persley, who was a photojournalist for us for nine years, he sailed off into semi-retirement. And I'll have you know, when you say you have a news photographer opening, we had several inquiries from news photographers at other stations. And what they said was very similar. They want to get back to telling local stories in their community and not necessarily 
localizing a national story or doing a story on what's hot on Google Trends. So um, that was interesting to hear. We hired Adam Dukala away from CARE 11, and Adam's oh, wow. been here for about three months, and he's doing a great job. We had a reporter start on Monday named Sarah Tamer. Sarah grew up in Richfield, and she was working in Milwaukee, so this is a chance for her to come back to her home market. So. Um, hope both of those stick around for a good <coughs> amount of time. Second thing, we have some hardware to show off right out here. Uh, we compete at the Midwest <coughs> Broadcast <coughs> Journalists Association in the large market television category because we're, in Minne we're considered Minneapolis. So we compete against stations in Minneapolis and Milwaukee, and we came away with five plaques. A few awards of merit, first place for cable newscasts, and then first place for in the talk public affairs category for our newsmaker segment. And in case you're not familiar with that, that's something we started about a year ago. It was a chance to talk to local newsmakers, so that's uh, county commissioners, legislators, um, local organizations, about a topic that they would like to talk about, but then also topics that aren't necessarily video friendly. So we've covered a lot of mental health in that category. We've covered a lot of DEI initiatives. This past week, we talked to someone from North Hennepin Community College. They're one of five colleges in Minnesota that have been approved for the Second Chance Pell Experiment. So they are offering um, education to people behind bars. And so that when, that's a video topic that's hard to tell because there's a lot of red tape anytime you try to photograph inmates. So it's a good way to talk about what that is, why it's important, and to get it out to the public. So if you have any ideas of someone in your city, your community, or your sphere of influence who would like to come on and talk about a singular issue for three minutes, just let me know. We're pretty open to what that is. So that's what I have, Dave. Thank you, Shannon. Any right. questions for Shannon? If not, we'll move ahead. Congratulations on all of your awards. They're very well deserved. Thank you very much. We're proud of them. Thanks, Emily. Next is Tim Gaffron. He will talk about CCX City, some of the things that you see happening out at your city halls and beyond. Tim. I'll come closer so you can see me better. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, report is in your, your packet. Um, as you know, it's been a crazy couple of years, and we've spent uh, those two years adapting to new ways of operating at city halls with uh, city council meetings in hybrid fashion, uh, remote fashion. Um, some are back, most are back in person now. Um, many cities have decided that they like to have that hybrid option for um, public to, to participate in meetings remotely, so um, we've been working on incorporating that into a couple of our systems, and um, uh, it's, it's, it's a new world for us out there. Um, it was a busy month in April. Uh, we had 40 meetings. Um, normally, during a month, we have 36, 37 meetings. Uh, we had a couple of added um, board of zoning appeals or, or um, those types of meetings. Um, other projects going on, um, remodeling is in progress at Golden Valley. This is the um, song that never ends, um, <laughs> as Cheryl knows. Um, this is going on year three that we've been involved in, in this project, and it's finally actually happening. Um, however, as with a lot of projects, we're experiencing a lot of issues with um, supply of equipment. Um, we have six to 12 month lead times on a lot of pieces, crucial pieces of equipment in systems that we're working on. Um, we've had substitution of brands and models, which don't always correlate one to one. Um, so we, that incurs redesign costs, um, restocking costs, and then something's not available, and then all of a sudden, the vendor integrator tells the supplier that, okay, we're gonna switch to something else, and then the piece they originally ordered shows up on the doorstep, so um, it's, it's been a little crazy with that. Um, looking towards the future here, candidate forms are already being scheduled for the fall. We have several scheduled in September, um, a few in October, and I imagine I'll start getting uh, quite a few calls here for primary candidate forms as soon as um, all the filings are, are complete and our League of Women Voters knows what they have uh, on tap. Um, it does seem like it's constant election season too. We've had special elections in a couple of our cities. Um, I think Brooklyn Park had two special elections in the last uh, year, so it's been a little ongoing. And the other thing I would mention is staffing. Um, 
working on adding a few more staff people. We kind of cut back through attrition during the pandemic because we couldn't have two people in a lot of the closed spaces and the control rooms. Um, so now we're working on, on building back, um, filling those positions, uh, assuming that we're going to be able to continue to have uh, people in close proximity, at least uh, with masking. But, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with the pandemic. If we did, we'd be rich. Um, so, uh, but we're working on that. And I think that's all I have for right now. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Uh-oh. I just would like to um, recognize all of Tim's help and efforts and everything we do um, with our equipment and our programming and everything. Um, this is my third go around with refurbishing <laughs> council chambers. And he has been there every single time and we would have been lost without him. This time it's been especially useful. He has helped us in more ways than I can even name. And so thank you, Tim, formally, from the city. Thank God for consultants, too. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you for the consultants you referred us to. So. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. There also is some information from a statistical basis in your packet from some of the views and engagement with some of the council meetings. I will mention as well on the Canada forums that we have been contacted by a few of the League of Women voter groups outside of our area that are interested in using our production services to help them cover Canada forums that are not within the nine cities. So that is an opportunity that we're looking at is possibly working with those groups on a for hire basis to help them cover some of their Canada forums. Next up would be CCX Create. Javi Cedillo. Good morning. So uh, in front of you, hello. Uh, so in front of you um, on the report, you'll see a few photos there. Everybody's smiling, of course, because um, they were just having a blast. Uh, the first image there, you'll probably see the African-American Navy League. Uh, they contacted us asking us if they could host a documentary here. So what we planned what we created was uh, a whole uh, volunteer production and they were here for maybe around six hours documenting stories from um, veterans who have been in the Navy and achieved uh, certain goals that people in their league have not reached yet. Well, uh, of course, they already have. So it was, uh, it was very interesting. It was amazing stories. Um, we're we're hoping it gets uh, um, all put together, and of course, um, just wanted to name drop Sydney. She was our intern last year. She's the one editing um, the whole piece together. So the plan was to launch it here and then broadcast that documentary all over United States uh, on all public access channels. So uh, it's really fun to actually have that um, done here. Um, and of course, you see stats there. Um, stats were looking really good. Um, so uh, with that, uh, genres, topics, um, they're all looking really nice. Of course, that entertainment is always a fun one. Um, and if we go um, underneath that, you'll see a volunteer there. I kind of <laughs> wanted to highlight her. She started at the beginning of the year. She has been a burst of energy, energy that uh, every, every time she comes in. So uh, she's had this um, stories. Uh, she shared her stories with everybody. And now she wants to capture their stories. So um, she wants to make sure that everybody has an idea of if you're in a situation, anything is possible. Uh, perseverance, resilience, um, that's her motto. So she's always trying to make sure that um, people, oh, I think I already said that. So if they're in that situation, anything is possible. Um, and then on to your right hand side, um, you see, um, I believe, equipment. Yeah, can't really tell from here. I'm just going to peek. And your here. visit to Wyzetta High School. You oh, were a star you. to thank the you. students yeah. at Wyzetta. Yeah, so I, I went to Wyzetta and I, um, I, let pe I let these kids know that the, the fun that they could do in broadcasting, reporting, uh, being a reporter, photog. And things like that and the requirements in order to be doing something like that um there was a lot of comparisons because they would be like well what can my iphone do that this camera can't do better and of 
course, with the camera that we have here, you get a network of producers, volunteers, and an iPhone, you're kind of by yourself. So it, it, it was just fun storytelling. It was fun talking to these kids. Um, they're not even kids or high school students. So um, just I had a blast there. I was there for four hours just sharing stories and letting them know how I was able to go to a college and then work here and just have a blast. So um, that was fun. Um, and then the one underneath that, I can't see it from here. <laughs> New tools. New, new tools, yes. So um, the last few months, uh, we've been receiving some new equipment. Um, so we are um, so we are preparing for the summertime. So we have received cameras, tripods, everything for the volunteers to create their summer productions or you know yearly amazing productions. We have upgraded most of our stuff that's been here for the last ten years. Um, so we wanted to make sure they had new equipments um, up and running. They're prepared for anything. Um, we also received a new switcher um, that's going to be installed in the next few weeks. Um, very excited about that. So um, yeah, about that one. And props. So I wanted to me uh, mention Trudy. She's been helping out with the props. So on set storage, we've been receiving, or we've been kind of making uh, fun modern props so when everybody comes in it doesn't look dated it looks more new modern 2022 so <laughs> we're just having fun so yeah if, you, if anybody has any questions let me know so yeah thank you thank you thank you Javi thank you Last report is the CCX Media Report, and in the past, normally, I have given you this full <laughs> report, but as my responsibilities change, we thought, who would be better to come tell you about sports and events than John Jacobson, our sports and events director? So we got him up early here after late night games and sports coverage to talk a little bit about sports and events. John, take All it right. away. Thank you very much, Dave. Well, the uh, first mention in your report was about the the champions we had this winter. The, the high school winter sports season ends every year with the boys basketball tournament and this year it ended in what we call the all CCX championship. It was Wyzetta, the defending state champion in boys basketball in class 4A against Park Center. It was a great game, a lot of community, community support from both of those school communities and the cities and uh, Park Center won, and it was a big deal for that school because it's the first state boys team champion they've had in the 50 plus years uh, that Park Center has been open. They had special recognition for the team and the coaches at both Brooklyn Center and Brooklyn Park uh, City Council meetings a couple of weeks later, and so it was a, it was a huge deal. And that just kind of capped what was really a, a terrific season for local teams. We had uh, state champions, uh, we had also Tutino Grace, one of the private schools that we cover, had uh, girls and boys basketball team championship. Providence Academy won in uh, girls basketball. Uh, Breck Blake won in boys swimming. So we had a lot of uh, outstanding team achievements and team championships this year, along with uh, individual champions like a state champion wrestler from Osseo. Um, it, was, it was a fun season to, to cover. And then we transitioned into spring sports, and we hardly have any spring sports in the month of April. It was a terribly cold and, and wet month, as you know, and that caused headaches for activities directors and coaches and teams. There was one local team I know that didn't get a, a game in until April 26th. And so they've been playing catch up here in May as the, the weather has mostly been, been nice, and uh, we're getting those games in. It's spring sports season is, is always shorter anyway, because it starts in April, and by third week in May, they're starting playoffs already and this year even more condensed so there's been challenges for us to cover that but we're, uh, we're getting out there every day now and being able to cover these different sports uh, one thing I want to mention too along with covering sports our department covers events that means parades in the summer the concerts in the park that a lot of your cities have and uh, graduations commencement exercises that started in, last week with two of them that we uh, televised for the last several years now, North Hennepin Community College and Hennepin Tech. Both were down at uh, Minneapolis Convention Center. And then we have the high school commencements that will start. I think the first one of our local schools is Wyzetta on June 3rd, and then quite a few more in the next 10 days after that that we'll be covering with our uh, production truck. So 
uh, it keeps us busy, and then we get into the first parade, actually, Dave, coming up, what, June 4th in Correct. Brooklyn Park, mm -hmm. and then, then we have parade season coming up as well. So we, we keep busy, whether it's sports or not, but uh, certainly a fun uh, last several months for us covering uh, high school sports in the area. Any questions? Okay. Otherwise, Dave has a couple other things. Thank you, John. Yeah, I'll touch on department. the last two items, and these are more for production services. We recently completed an Honor Guard documentary. We were coming alongside the Vietnam veterans of American Honor <coughs> Guard 470. This is out of Anoka. So again, this is interesting to see that groups outside of our coverage area are contacting us and wanting us to work with them on different projects. This was producing a touching and historical video footage was captured at multiple services where this honor guard goes out in the rain, in the snow, in whatever it might be to honor veterans as they pass away. They shared their stories of commitment and of keeping traditions alive to respectfully honor those who have served. So a great piece that was given to that group and we had many, many orders of the DVDs as you might imagine from the members of that group and their families. Also, continuing production services partner asked for more. The Seven Dreams Education Foundation, which supports Robbinsdale area schools, came to us with a bigger ask this year. For the third year in a row, we produced their Fund the Need video. This time it was around orchestra and band support. In addition, they also asked us to help with streaming services for their gala, plus production of a second promotional video around band and orchestra opportunities. So again, all in our production services area. And hats off to Tamisha Torre and Dustin Cooper, who work very closely with those clients that come to us and ask for additional services. So proud to work with those groups again. And just a final note again, thanks to the staff for their support during this transition period of time. It has been a lot, but they have been fantastic. And especially want to recognize Wendy Brierly, some fantastic help related to this meeting, all of the materials, all of that goes into the back end. So thank you, Wendy, for your support. Okay, is there anything else? All right, there being nothing else, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Uh, moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Our meeting's ended. I guess we're <laughs>